I interviewed Michael Frenzis, who was the highest ranking member of the mafia from one of the five. What's his name? Michael Frenzis. Okay. Yeah, it's up on my uh, YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. But he was a capo in the Colombo crime family. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, but one of the original five families. Yeah, one of the original five families. Mm -hmm. And uh, he made most of his money. He had this this gasoline tax scam where he was making like ten million dollars a week. He, he basically had all these gas stations, and he would collect tax from the gas stations, and then just keep the money, and then just. <laughs> start a new company and then do the same thing. And he just kept doing that over and over again. Mm -hmm. He was making literally $10 million a week doing the shit. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and he says something interesting. I want you to understand, everybody talks about murder all the time. It's the most serious thing, and it is, that people attribute to the, to the evil of that life. But he, here's the way we looked at it, whether right or wrong. When we come into that life, we take an oath. And at that time, we're told if we violate the oath, we could pay for it with our lives and your best friend might be called upon because the life becomes before anything. Now, we weren't random killers. Murder was taken extremely seriously. It could only be ordered by the boss. There was always discussion about it. And, uh, you know, we weren't doing drive-by shootings. We weren't just randomly killing people. You know, it was confined to us. And when I say us, it was we that knew that we could pay the price if we made a mistake or we did something wrong. Now, what I said before is that I saw people die for, I don't think they should have, because the life gets corrupted. But I always want to say this, we weren't random killers, we didn't go around murdering people, it was taken very seriously. And I think that's a wrap. You know, you see all of these wars, well, who are we killing? We're killing each other. Not to say one is any better than the other, because the other day, murder is murder. Right. But the, the mafia was a different type of organization. Mm -hmm. Structure and, uh, and discipline. Structure and discipline. Yeah. It's understandable, and there's lawlessness out here right now because, there, you know, everybody can, you know, you can pretty much be who you want to be. It's nobody to answer to. You know, it's so disrespectful how a lot of the young dudes today in better positions than guys older than them that paved the way for them to be able to maneuver around the streets like they do. They don't even pay them homage. You know, it's like, oh, uh, you're a has-been. It's over with for you. It's my turn now. But, you know, they don't get no credit for the, you know, for the things that they done did to make it safe for them to operate like they operate. So <sighs> the game is fucked up, man. The game fucked up. We, are we just hoping that, you know, with the loss of Nip, Everybody maintain that spirit right now that's yeah. going around of love and unity and, you know, peace and working together and viewing each other as brothers and sisters. You know, that's that's pervading right now in L.A. and in the surrounding areas and even spots outside of the state. But it has to be something that's consistently... Um, you know, organized to, to, to make bigger things happen from it. Not just we get along now. What are we doing with this power that we now have, this power unity? Because solidarity is power. Yeah. You know, so, you know, you need the right people with the right uh, solutions or projections to sit down and kind of like, steer this in the, you know, in the direction that's going to benefit not just the people that's from gangs and involved in gangs, but the community as a whole. Yeah, man. Like I said, I hope it stays up. I hope. I, that, I believe uh, it will. I let's, it uh, will. you know, I mean, you've seen, I guess, after the riots, you I had, you had um, are you in prison? Yeah. Yeah. Prison. But, but there was a peace treaty, a peace treaty mm -hmm. that, that had some level of success. Yeah, it did. It did. You know? I think yeah. we're seeing the second iteration of that, and I'm hoping that's going to stay a lot longer. Right. Um, because as as glorious as Nipsey Hussle's funeral looked to the world, Nipsey didn't get to see it. No. His family are crying still. His, he had, I think, two or three kids. They'll never get to see their dad. Lauren London, you know, will never get to spend any time with him. His parents, his mom and dad are grieving. It's nothing glorious about what's happening around him right now. Right. It just looks glorious to the outside. Right. You know what I'm saying?
Well, is 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 the glory comes in the spirit that yeah. that it has um, caused to take root in the city. You know, it's like now if you're on some, you know, animosity with the next man, or you talking about going to do some harm to somebody, or like yeah. you know, it's like that shit is whack now. That shit is being looked at as that's kind of whack, homie. Yeah. You know, it's better shit that we could be doing right now with our time. You know, I'm I'm trying to be a mogul like Nip. You know, I'm trying to I'm trying to set a good example like Nip. You know, what I'm saying it's like a lot of people want to emulate him, and being in the game as long as I've been and being my age, I looked at Nip. Like, you know, it's my little homie, he stomped down, you know, he's solid. But Nip was 33 years old. And, mm. you know, hip hop, you get into hip hop, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years old, 13, 14. So a lot to, a, to most of, you know, the hip hop community, Nip was something like a big homie, you know, because mm -hmm. he influenced a lot of athletes and things like that and these guys in their 20s and you know uh in you know late teens early 20s mid 20s and you know that was their big homie you know yeah. so it, it it's 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 a stronger it's a stronger attraction to want to keep his keep his name honored in the right capacity you know what i'm saying so i think i think that's what's going to cause it to be more than just a fly by night you know, hey, let's let's photo op and get together and, you know, throw up our gangs and hold up our rags, you know, because this is the spirit right now. You know, I, I think, I really think that with the people that's involved in pushing it, as long as they keep their foot on the paddle, we, yeah. we, we headed in the right direction. I hope so, man. Rest in peace, Nipsey Hussle, man. Oh, uh, man. Go listen to that Crenshaw album. Go listen to that uh, Victory Lap. Those are my two favorite projects from him. You know, right. he owns the Masters, so it goes right back to his family. Yeah, make sure you down go go buy that. some yeah. uh, some marathon clothing. Do uh, that. Do that. You know, and uh, you know, let, let, let's keep let's keep his spirit alive in terms of what he stood for. Because I think the reason why Nipsey was being celebrated was actually not for his rapping, but what he did outside of rap. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Because he mm -hmm. was never a mainstream artist. No, he wasn't Tupac musically. Mm -mm. Not to say one's but better he than the spoke other. To the streets. Yeah, he never had those huge radio hits. Yeah, he was more of an underground rapper. Right. But you know, he just dropped his first studio. He just dropped album, his first you know? studio yeah, album. Yeah, but it's yeah, what yeah. he did outside of the rap, mm -hmm. which is why he still sold out the Staples Center and why there was. Such That's a, a combination. Of a combination. It's, it's really. I, I believe it's really who he was as a person. Yeah. Because if you, because. You could kind of almost get to know him through his music. Yeah, you know, just because what he what he represented, he spoke on with conviction. Yeah, and you could feel it. You yeah. know, you could feel it from him. And if you if you that's if you didn't know him, if you did know him, like we was blessed to you know actually know him. You saw that that was a genuine spirit. It wasn't nothing fake about him. It wasn't, wasn't nothing fraudulent about him. No. It wasn't nothing like, you know, let me put this air on right now because I'm Nipsey Hussle and, you know, I'm that nigga right now. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't never, it, it was always with respect and it was always with, you know, I always saw him seeking knowledge and a deeper understanding about whatever was taking place, you yeah. know, and, and his mom pretty much said the same thing, you know, when, when she spoke on him, I was like, yeah, so I did, I did pretty much pick him, you know, pick his character, yeah. you know. Uh, yes, sir. Well, Trey uh, D, man, always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Make sure they, uh, you, you let them know, man, they got that certified project out, that shit killing right now. Yo, uh, grab that shit. I got to, yeah, I got that, uh, Got that gangster film series coming out too. So. Yep. Is DW Flame out yet? 
No, nah, he he goes to court on the twenty sixth. Okay. So God willing. Yeah, man. Free DW pray. flying. Free DW uh, flame. Vlad Holland for you. You know right. you're a star, boy. That's right. I know there's some <laughs> cell phones in, in the in the jail right now. I know Vlad TV. I heard Vlad TV's big in the in the jail and prison system. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's right. what I heard from a lot of people. So I know y'all getting this. Right. That's right. what it is. Until Good next time, time. man. No Peace. doubt.